G'day and welcome back. Today I'm broadcasting from Melbourne. It's a chilly 17 degrees here. Back home it's 27. So, so I'm feeling the cold a little bit. Uh, once a year we drive down to Melbourne from Queensland and visit relatives and friends. And during my trip this year, um, I've been given these two radios by my brother-in-law. He found them on a deceased estate. And I bought this one on Marketplace. It's a signal tracer. And the guy said, oh, you want a radio? So he gave me that little Peter Pan unit. So what I thought, I'll try them out. I've got a dim bulb at the end there, and we'll just give them a try, see how many of them work. I reckon they'll all work to some degree. So let's start with the signal tracer, we'll see if that works. Here it is here, it doesn't have a brand name on it, it does have signal tracer written up the corner there. Um, there's a big hole there, I don't know what that is. And gain switches and whatever else, somebody's marked them off. But it looks like a home built. It is professionally engraved on the front. So somebody that was in the industry perhaps made it and had access to engraving. Yeah, I don't know. It has a little cover on the top. I'll take the screws out and see what's inside. All right, screws are off. Well, let's have a look. Here it is. Uh, it's got a power transformer, rectifier. It's got three valves there. Output transformer. Over here, there's a little jack for putting an earphone in there, I assume. Now if we look down here, there's a couple of old capacitors in there, they need to be changed. There's a cover on the bottom, so I can't see what's underneath. It's got a fairly new looking power lead on it. So someone's changed the lead at least. I'll plug it in, we'll see what happens. Now if you recall, I made a little field um, dim bulb tester last year for a radio I did down here. So I'm going to use that again. So I'll just plug that in there. The unit's on, I'll just see what happens with the dim bulb. So that's behaving pretty normally. All right, uh, let's see what goes on. I've selected those both to minimum. Uh, I don't know what they do. It's on. Uh, let's see if I touch the probe. Oh, it does work. Uh, dodgy pot there. So that's working. That seems to be a sensitivity. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, well, that one works. That was RF. This one is audio frequency, I guess. Oh, I can just make it out, audio. What's that say? Low gain. Controlling the gain, low gain. Don't know. So there's the probe for that. Not getting much out of that one. Yeah, maybe that side's not working. I'll turn this off. It is smelling a bit. It's probably just dust. I'll turn it off. Um, I'll take it home and I'll probably redo this one, remake it. Uh, I do need a good heavy duty signal tracer. I've got the old trans... Oh, hang on, the globe's still going. So even in the off position, it's still drawing power somewhere. So that's probably not good. Yeah, all right. I'll turn it off with the switch, I think. There we go. As I was saying, I'll, I'll take this home. I'll probably do a complete um, restore on this and I'll put it on the shelf. I sh should be able to use it. I'll probably have to make up some decent probes, that's all. I'll go and get the little Peter Pan radio. We'll try that one. All right, so this is a Peter Pan. Um, Peter Pan was an Australian manufacturer. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, the dial's a bit damaged there. But I'll take it out and we'll see if it's going to work. Oh, just comes out. Okay, there it is. It's volume and it's just tuning and volume. And from the top, it's all there. Uh, it looks all right. Uh, that wire's come off the grid cap there, or the grid cap's completely missing there. Um, there might be enough there to be able to pick it up. Uh, valve, that's a 6A8. So this will probably be... Uh, might be a 60, I bet it'll be a 6B6 in there, 6V6 and 5Y3, I know you can 5Y3, you can see it. Now someone's put a new modern speaker in there too. I use a clip lead to connect this uh, you know, grid cap onto the wire out of the transformer there. Uh, this one, um, I'll put a clip on this one as well and then I can... Hopefully hold it against that. There's enough wire. I can just fear the wire. So once again, dim bulb. And look, don't do this at home. I haven't really checked this. This, this won't be used as a radio. It'll be scraps. Oh, is that your puppy 
son. Yeah, his name's Scraps, and he's going to the moon with us. <laughs> oh, no. No dogs are allowed on the shuttle, son. I'm afraid Scraps will have to be shot. So I'll just turn it on, we'll see what happens, but I'll almost guarantee it'll work. The dial lights are on, the dim bulb is perfect. I'll turn it up, now it won't hear much, because it doesn't have an antenna and this uh, grid caps off, so it's getting through. I'll turn it up. So if I hold that there, see if I can find anything. There it is, look. It's not very loud. Amazing, look at this. So pretty amazing, most of these radios work. Now if you can hear that, it's garbled. So the Coupling capacitors are shot in it. I will turn it off because maybe I'd use that 6v6 valve if it's any good. So that's one radio out of one that's going to work. Uh, so I'll put this aside and I'll drag out the Astor. Before I put it away, I thought I'll have a look underneath, but somebody's already changed the capacitors on this one. And I can count one, two, three, four, five. So that's the grid there, and the capacitor is here. So they've changed that. So that garbling noise is probably the main filter capacitors. And these are all black capacitors. I don't know if anyone but Carl sells them. There's a Carl uh, capacitor uh, resistor, I mean. So someone's bought them from Carl's capacitors, I would say. Yeah, look, I've gone a bit silly. I had a couple of capacitors. Everyone travels around Australia with capacitors in their pockets. So I've just soldered those into the two filter caps. The old filter caps are still in circuit but I don't think they're shorted out, so we'll see if that makes a difference. I've soldered the wire back on the top of the cap there, and I pinched the valve out of the Astor JJ. It's the same valve, 6A8. I'll just turn it on, we'll see what it's all happening. Looks the same. Uh, that clip is just holding that clip on the top cap. I'll try it out, it's making a noise. First book launch. And that was exactly the type of thing that he would have, would have said. It was. That so it's got a buzz in there, but it's um, it's clear. We were gonna, we were gonna succeed, and when he died, yeah, that buzz might go away if it had a ground on it and earth. So whoever changed those capacitors was so close to getting it right. All they had to do was change the the electrolytics, get the old ones out of the circuit too, but uh, they would have had a functional radio. And the way you approach your students is a way of honouring the kind of teacher he was to you. Now that's with no aerial. And only now. Kevin, that was my fault. Here we go, bit of aerial. So. Very good. So that's my attempt at doing a Shango type repair in the field. All right, this time I'm going to put it aside. We'll have a look at the Astor JJ. I'll have to steal the valve out again, uh, but let's see if that one works. Here's the Astor JJ, and I've started at the bottom because that's how it fell out of the case. And it looks pretty untouched. The capacitors are all there. This has newer wire in here, so somebody's been in here and played with it. Uh, not quite sure what they're doing. Anyway, won't worry about that. I'll turn it over. We'll see what it looks like on the top. There's the back. It's all there. I've got to put that 6A8G uh, valve back. Put his little cap on. That's lost its screw. That's okay. I'll tighten the remaining screw on there just to stop it flopping around. So once again, I'll plug it in, but I need to change this cord. It's, it's completely gone. The rubber's just perished. So I'll come back in a second. We'll see if it works. I fitted a new cord. It's all ready to give it a go. So I'll put some power on once again. Globe works perfectly. All right, I got nothing out of this. It's not a sound. In fact, there's no hum. No, there's no hum. So the amp's not working. So the rectifier's warm. 6V6 is warm. Yeah, this one, yeah, I'm not sure if they're going or not. They're not nowhere near as warm as they should be. 
Now being an Astor radio, they give you a little handy B plus test port there. And we've got 131, so that's not enough to make it work. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what part's not working. Um, I'll bypass the dim bulb for just a second to see if it comes up. I'm not very keen on doing this, but I'll just try it for a second. All right, we're gonna bypass it now. Yeah, 270. So that's the difference. It's not working because the voltage is too low. So that's getting hot. 200 volts, that should be tons. I said I'd put this on for a second and it's been on for half a minute now. Let's have a look underneath. I'll take the power off. I've got the radio on its side. Here's the output valve. Uh, that's a 6V6. So 1, 2, 3 is the plate, which we already measured. And that's going all over the plate. What's going on? That'll be me. 200 volts. I'll try and get the meter in there. So the next one should be the screen. And we've got 242. Okay. Uh, if I touch that, yeah, there's nothing coming out of the speaker. So it's got all the makings. So maybe the 6V6 is just burnt out. Uh, what's the grid got on it? So the grid's got 18 volts, I think. 6 volts. Yeah, about 6 volts positive on it. So that capacitor is shot. All right, I'll turn the power off. So I'm calling this one a fail. It doesn't work out of the box. So that's one out of two that didn't work. All right, I've got the last one, the healing radio. This is it upside down at the moment. I've fitted a power cord to it. Wow, these capacitors are rough. So they may still work, I don't know. Anyway, we'll turn it over, see what's on the top. Well, here's the top and it is absolutely covered in dust. It's thick, it's like a carpet in there. Anyway, I'll uh, see if it goes. The dial string's broken, of course, so I'll have to wind it by hand. I've turned it on, that's the on-off switch. This is the volume, I'll turn it up. Uh, that was tone, and I'll tune it by hand, all right? Now, as usual, okay, let's try it out. And it works perfectly, or well, the globe's responding normally. Got a couple of very dim dial lights on there. Ooh. There we go. It is working. Oh, that's working. That's working. And that's working. So the signal's getting all the way through. Bit of feedback there though. So that's flat out. Um, Not getting anything. Yeah, just not picking anything up. I'll just wobble the valves a bit. That's working. All the valves must be working to some extent. I'm just not getting a signal through. The bulb is behaving itself, so I think we're reasonably safe. So let's see what happens. God. Yeah. So that's off dim bulb. So it is making crackling and it, it is getting a signal. You'd probably wonder if the oscillator's running. I'm not going to play with this with it off dim bulb, so I'll just kill the power. Well, there they are. They're a bit of a mess now. I'll have to put them all back together again. But uh, I did get my signal tracer to work, which was okay. It, it needs work, obviously. And the old Peter Pan down the back there, that worked fine. These two probably would work with a minimum amount of... Uh, you know, changing something in there to get them to go. I think they would probably work. Certainly this one would work. It's the next morning and I edited all this video together last night. And at the end I said, I reckon with a bit of work, you would get the last two that I did to work. These two, I think they would probably work. Certainly this one would work. Now my quest yesterday was to just see if they would work when you plugged them in, which failed because really 
two of them didn't work at all and one that did work had been worked on. So what I did notice with this one, and this is the Astor JJ, that's the second last one I tried. I bolted this back down, I screwed the screw back down on the output transformer there. And of course, these wires in there, and they've obviously broken because it can swivel up here. So that's why there was no sound from this one. I will try and reconnect them somehow and see if I can get this to work. I've loosened that screw off a bit and there's the two secondaries there. So they've been sheared off. I will see if I can wire them back. They've got to go on here. I'll see if I can put some wire on there and connect them back up again. I've got a little bit of wire here. I'll just tack them in to replace the broken bit. Still a bit of mid-air soldering here. It's only going to last for five minutes. There's that one. Now I've got to make sure they're the right way around or I'll get positive feedback and it'll just squeal. This is the coupling capacitor. I've snipped one end. I'm going to take it out. And I've got another little one here. It's not quite the right value. Uh, I did bring a supply of spare parts because every time I go somewhere, someone will say, oh, I've got an old radio there. You want to have a look at it? So now I just bring a little box of capacitors and some resistors. So if that doesn't spell nerd, I don't know what does. All right, we'll give it a try. I changed the output valve to the 6V6 out of the little Peter Pan radio. I know that one works. That's why I changed that capacitor. I didn't want to destroy that one. So I put some power on it. It's on dim bulb still. Oh, it's a hum already. Oh, whoa, whoa, so much hum. <laughs> okay. All right, that's just nuts. Now that's coming from the amplifier. That'll be the smoothing caps. I'll have to do something with those. So not gonna be such an easy job, I don't think. Hang on a second, I'll fix it. I pinched the two capacitors I put in that Peter Pan yesterday and I've put them in here. So I'll try that. I still have the old caps in circuit. They didn't appear to be shorting out, so they should be okay for this test. I flipped it over, we'll try it again. Dim bulb, you can't see it. It's working fine. So hopefully the hum's gone. Got some noise there. Antenna. Now the tuner I'm about to do by hand. This of the life didn't go as far as kind of creating completely different world as with me. Uh, we're going to talk about dancing today, what your moves are. I want Ooh. you to describe them for me. Or those that you love, have you got... Wow, if I turn the volume down, it squeals. Our Spotify play today. Tony, you said you were coming... <laughs> is there anything else that we should discuss? What, yeah, what, what is that? <laughs> it's an ibis. It is not. Yes. Yeah, it goes in isolation if I turn the volume down. I'll reverse these wires. They may well have been crossed. I put them the way they laid, uh, but I often cross them over. So I'll reverse it. I'm not sure if this is going to fix it or not. All right, I've swapped those over. We'll see if that does anything. So power on again. Egyptian throwing sticks. All right, should be able to turn it down now. Yeah, so I, they were crossed over as I warned earlier. I thought I had put them the right way. And there's almost no way of telling, well, you can tell, but without testing, there's no way of knowing which way they go. So, so try and error is probably the best way to go. So that's working really well. Flexible inflation targeting. That's amazing. Well, the review panel has concluded that as well. The 2 to 3% target range is well understood in the community and it helps anchor inflation expectations. So that's the other one going. Uh, now, admittedly, I had to do a little bit of work. 
If the screw hadn't have come out of the audio output transformer and let it flop around, it wouldn't have sheared it off, it pretty much would have worked. But a bit of good information there, I had those crossed over and I said it would howl. What I didn't know was when you go to full volume, it would not howl. So uh, that was something I've learned there. Anyway, these have got to be the right way around if it's got negative feedback into the amplifier from the speaker. This is the negative feedback circuit and it's being fed back into the bottom of the volume control here. It needs to be out of phase with the volume control, so it cancels it out a little bit. But when you've got it reversed and it's in phase, that's when you get the feedback, Hal. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. All right, so that's two that are working. I'll move on to the next one. This was the last one I tried and it didn't pick up any stations. It was making noises, but no stations. So I'll power it on again. Dim bulb, working fine. And that's the volume down there. It's on full volume. It does have dial lights, so there's power getting through. Ah, I remember that now. So it's picking something up. And they were all working. Yeah, so that's going. Bit of dirt on the bit of dirt on the capacitor there. So it's not picking up any stations. I'll bypass the dim bulb for a second, we'll see if it comes good. Okay, it's on full power now. Yeah, same thing, just a bit louder. So let's check the oscillator. This is the converter or mixer valve and pin 5 is the oscillator grid 1. So if I put my meter on there, we can see it. It should have a minus number. It's minus uh, 3 volts roughly. So that should indicate the oscillator is working. Now another way to test it of course is to use a second transistor radio and I've got this set fairly high on the dial. I can't quite see where it is so uh, it should be 455 above whatever that radio is tuned to, which I don't know what it is, but it's up the top end there, um, so I turn it up, you should hear the whistle. There it is. Okay, if I turn it off, it'll stop. Turn the radio off, that is. Okay, so that oscillator is oscillating. I was going to give up and then I thought, hang on, I've got a signal tracer here. I've got it running on dim bulb. I'll just see if I can trace the signal. The radio is actually on full voltage. The volume on the radio is turned down. So if I touch that, it should come out that um, tester over there. And there, and if I touch this one, it'll come out that speaker because we're going past the volume control. Yep, okay. Now, if I hold it near it and not touch that, we'll see if we can tune it. So it's picking it up, you can hear the plate rubbing in there, or whatever it is. Not getting anything else. Try this one. Yes, yeah, so there's no signal getting to there. So the problem's right in the front end somewhere. Could be an open circuit in this antenna coil here. Um, yeah, something up the front end's not working. I can change that valve. The other radio had one of those valves. Hang on. So this is the valve that was in the Peter Pan. We'll put that in. I'll put the power on and we know that one works. I'll see if that makes any difference. Turn the volume up there. No, it's not There's something. There you go, it's working. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Alright, I'll turn it off. So 
So I think the faults in this are probably too complex. It needs to be cleaned up, get rid of all those old capacitors, then you've got a chance of getting it to work. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I kind of got those two radios working. Certainly the first one was working. This one, yeah, I couldn't really claim that as working. I'll call it a day on these ones. It was just a little bit of fun just to you know, see, see how old radios work. Did a bit of troubleshooting today. Can I just say that if you're going to do this sort of thing at home and you're not 100% sure what you're doing, either don't do it or be absolutely careful. Don't touch anything while it's running. Only use one hand, don't use two hands at once so you're not making a circuit through your heart. Just be super, super careful. It's not worth it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me play around with these and maybe you learned something. And I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure.